I immediately was like, oh, this is so much better. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Just another struggling writer. The beleaguered author's one-stop shop for commiseration and hopefully inspiration. My name is Carrie Cher, and I... I'm just another struggling writer. Well, today is the start of another reading vlog. And over the last couple of weeks, I've gotten so much reading done. I feel like I am back after a horrible months long reading slump. And while at the end of this past week, I kind of tapered off a little bit, I, I still am really proud of myself for kind of getting back on that wagon and continuing to grind and, and try new books. This week, I am hoping to finish two books that I started at the end of last week. The first one being The Sun and the Void by Gabriela Romero LaCruz. I am currently at about 40%, just under 300 pages left out of a over 500 page book. If you watched my last video, you kind of know already what some of my thoughts are on this book. It is kind of a slog to get through. I am putting it out in the universe that I want to have it done by Tuesday, which would mean reading about 150 pages today or tomorrow and Tuesday. But I wouldn't at all be surprised if I don't because it is it just it doesn't really engage me. I am just kind of reading it just to get through it. I had done a softy enough of it back in like March or April or May, I can't remember, one of the months of my reading slump. And I knew that I wanted to finish reading it at some point, but at that time I just knew it wasn't, it wasn't the right time. And now that I'm 40% in, I can say that there, I, I just don't vibe with the writing style necessarily, but there are elements that I like and I do want to commit to finishing it. So that being said, hoping for Tuesday, wouldn't at all be surprised if it's Wednesday or Thursday. If I do manage to finish it, I am going to, my next library read will be uh, The Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. This has been on my holds for weeks and then I got it and then I was still slumping and then it went back and then I had to go back onto the hold list anyway. So I am committed to reading it this time so I don't have to go through this cycle again. So. After I finish The Sun and the Void, my goal is to at least start The Children of Bl Blood and Bone. I don't know anything about it other than it's YA and possibly African inspired. I don't know. That's that's really all I know about it and that it was a big deal. I mean, it still is a big deal because obviously there's like this huge hold on it. So YA again has is hit or miss for me. Sometimes I think it's good. A lot of times I think it's just meh, but that is mostly because I'm not a huge YA person. But as I have said numerous times, I continue to read them because I think they are valid and important for me to read just to continue to broaden my horizons and my expectations and my knowledge of fantasy as a genre. So we'll just see. And then for my physical read, I'm going to continue reading uh, A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I'm currently about 20% in. I started this on Friday. And I'm liking it so far. I'm liking it a little bit less than Divine Rivals, but I do really, really, really feel connected and love the main character, Jack, already. So I'm hoping that the rest of the book goes well for him. Yeah, not really much to say about this one. Uh, I, I kind of understand of what the plot is going to be. I like the setting. Like, again, I love the main character. So. This is just something I don't really have a lot of commentary on. Probably, I, I, I may as I get further into it. Again, I'm only 20% of the way in, so. And then if I finish that, we'll get to draw out of the mimic. So I have no idea what that will be. I'm aiming to have that one done by Friday. We'll just have to see how the week plays out. I set a goal at the beginning of the month to read two books a week. And I have gotten away with that. I have technically done it with the caveat being that two of those books were novellas and one was one that I only got two thirds of the way through before I DNF'd, but I counted it because I had feelings. Uh, A River Enchanted is over 400 pages. The Sun and the Void is over 500 pages. So I have about, between what I have left in both books, I have like, 600 pages, which may be the extent of what I can do in a week. It just, 
This week is a little bit calmer. Uh, not nearly as much going on this week as I had last week. Uh, so we'll just have to see how it goes. But those are my reading plans. And I look forward to finding out what's going on with these books. Hey, y'all, I am just checking in for a quick reading update. I, it is now Monday evening, and I didn't get nearly as much reading as I had hoped accomplished today. I read just about 75 more pages of The Sun and the Void by Gabriela Romero La Cruz. And I am really starting to feel weary of this book. I am just about 50, just over 50%. And I very seriously considered DNFing it this evening because I just don't feel like there's anything more to be gained from reading the rest of it. The two main characters I have mentioned enjoying aspects of r the main main characters Reina's like kind of journey and her path as she goes down she kind of sinks into like this dark this darkness in her quest for love and acceptance and it is the only person willing to offer it to her is doing so to manipulate her and for their own evil ends and I kind of like that as a storytelling as a, as a story the problem is, is I'm just like so tired of the meandering the plot has taken. And then you add in the fact that the second perspective thus far is pretty useless. I, I just don't know what to expect from the rest of this book. I know what the sort of the goal is, but I don't, I don't have a concept of where, where we're going or why. I'm just, I'm just tired of slogging through it. I just sort of wish it would come to the point and stop wandering around aimlessly like it kind of feels like it is right now. So I'm going to sleep on it. I, I only have 230 pages left, so it's very doable. I don't think I'm going to finish it tomorrow, though. Like I had originally suggested that my intention was to finish it by Tuesday. Probably not going to happen. I may have time to, to put some work in and, and get a ch big chunk of it read tomorrow and then maybe finish on Wednesday. But we'll just have to see how I feel. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to sleep on it. it. It doesn't feel productive to DNF it right now, but at the same time, I'm, I'm kind of over it at this point. So we'll see. And that's it. That's all I have for you, unfortunately, today. Just a little bit of a kind of a downer. It is what it is. I hope that the as I get closer to like the 65% mark, the, the pacing will pick up and I can hurdle towards the end. But we'll just see. So maybe that'll be my goal for tomorrow is to get to like 65-ish percent. And then that way I can just race through the rest maybe on Wednesday. So anyway, that's my update and I will check in with you tomorrow to let you know if I decided to DNF or if I've decided to press on. Hey y'all, just checking in with a quick reading update. So today is now Wednesday and after trying to get through it again and thinking about it, I have decided to DNF The Sun and the Void at 55-ish percent. It was about, it was exactly page 300 out of like 515 pages. I just... I just started to feel like beleaguered every time I thought about opening the book and trying to get through it. And when I finally did convince myself to try it or, or to, to, to try and get through it some more, I was just skimming. And I was like, I'm only halfway through the book. I can't skim the last half of this book. Really, it just came down to it just felt very confused, not confusing, but confused. I, I just don't know that it knew where it was going at any point. The plot took a kind of a meandering long route to get set up. The second perspective, I still didn't really see what the point of it was. At 50%, there was just, just not a lot of, of direction or purpose, I felt. There were still elements that I liked, but I, I just don't feel like they were just executed with any sort of intention, which is a bummer because I really did want to finish it and at least see how it ended, but I, I, I couldn't read another 200 pages. So sadly, DNFing. I think I am going to count it that I read it because I got over 50%. I don't really know how I feel about that. I didn't rate it, but I think I am going to count it for like reading purposes because I read 300 pages <laughs> and I got over 50%. So I think I'm going to count it, but I don't feel great about it either way. But I also I spent a week on it and I couldn't get through it. And it was just sort of making me kind of miserable <laughs> to think about opening. Then I decided to give The Children of Blood and Bone a try by Tomi Adeyemi. And I read the first chapter and a half and I decided 
it was not for me. The YA voice was just too strong. Uh, as you know by now, I am very picky about my YA, and I just could tell that I was not going to vibe with it. Now, it might be a situation where I'm feeling a little bit more generous, that I could pick it up and enjoy it, but coming off of the heels of a DNF, I just I just could tell right away that it was it was going to be another situation where I was like forcing myself to pick it up and read it. And I didn't want to do that to myself and potentially trigger another slump. So then I would decided to go with a book that I felt pretty confident that I would enjoy with Paladin's Strength by T. King Fisher, the second in the Saint of Steel quartet. And I was right. I immediately was like, oh, this is so much better. <laughs> I only read the first like three or four chapters, uh, like not even the first 10%, but oh, what a relief. So this is again, the second book in the Saint of Steel Quartet, which follows each follows a paladin of a god who died mysteriously. And when the god died, the paladins of that god, like suffered as a result mentally, physically, and they are now a lot of them have also since passed away. And the ones that remain are just trying to make their way through life as these wayward paladins taking up other kinds of work while dealing with the other kind of fallout that came from their god's death. I thought the first one was fine, but I didn't actually like either of the protagonists, the male or the female character that much. I thought the male character was fine if generic, and the female character I did not jive with at all. So far in this one, I already know about the main the male character because he appeared in the first one and I, I, I think we'll, I'll probably like him just fine. And I am I, I get a better vibe from Clara, the uh, the main female character. So I'm hoping that this one I feel a little bit better about. I say better, but like I still gave Paladin's Grace like 3.5. So so not too far in that. And then I read another like chapter and a half, A River Enchanted today. And I have decided that I, I don't think at this moment, which is only like 25% of the way in, I don't think that I like the dynamic between Jack, the main character, and the like female heir to the clan, Adara, Adira. I have noticed something that really bothers me. And I noticed when I tried Gideon the Ninth as well, that when old childhood acquaintances, in both of these cases, kind of nemeses, you know, they use childhood nicknames or, that are unkind, and then they carry them into adulthood. I, I kind of hate that. I'm sorry. And that appears in both Gideon the Ninth, and it is appearing here. And the characters might not bristle at it, but I definitely am. So I don't love that. I hope it gets better. And again, like the character has, at least in, in A River Enchanted, has already like brushed it off like it's fine, but it is still originally rooted in unkindness. So I, I don't love it. But again, I'm only 25% of the way through. There, there's plenty of time for that dynamic to kind of heal uh, and get better. I just wish that they wouldn't do that. Like, why are you, especially if they're love interests, I have no idea about Gideon the Ninth, but in this one, it's I feel pretty certain that they're meant to be love interests. And it's just like, why would you do that? Why would you use a term against someone or for someone who viewed it as bullying as adulthood? And maybe now, yes, that he can be like, whatever, it doesn't affect me anymore. But like, why would you even take that approach if you're not trying to be hostile to them? I don't know. I don't get it. Of course, in Gideon the Night, they are it's intentionally using <laughs> meant to be hostile. But anyway, so... Not a big update today. I am kind of bummed about having to DNF another book so soon, but I'm just trying to protect my reading piece right now as much as I can. And I just can't be spending 10, 14 days on reading a single book when I'm trying to catch up on my reading goal. And yes, I probably could have finished The Sun and the Void given enough time, but why? Time is finite. So that's my thoughts on that. So. I will check in with you tomorrow. I do anticipate getting through Paladin Strength much faster than any of the other books I've been reading lately. Um, so hopefully I will have more to say on that tomorrow. Hello everyone, I am here to wrap up this reading vlog and if you couldn't tell, I have not gotten a whole lot of reading done this week. My only excuse is that I have been writing a lot and that has eaten into my reading time. So while I am bummed a little bit that I didn't hit my two 
book a week goal this week. I am pleased that I have been getting a lot of writing done because after all, writing is the ultimate goal for me. But I do just want to catch you up on the two books I have been reading because while I haven't made a ton of progress, there has been a little bit. So first, A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. It's over there. I'm not going to get it for you, but I am just over the 30% mark right now. A major plot point has occurred that is, I am sure, going to shape the direction that the rest of the story goes. And I will say that I don't think I am liking this one quite as much as I enjoyed uh, Rebecca Ross's other book that I read earlier this year. It's not flowing as easily for me. I'm not quite as hooked. I also am not super in love with the main character's dynamic with the female protagonist, the female, the female character. I feel quite certain that there is a romance brewing, which is fine. I just, I don't, I just don't know that I love their dynamic, nor his relationship with most of the other people on the island, just because of like his backstory and how he was treated. He was basically told that to, to leave the island and go to bard school and no one bothered to explain to him why. And so now it's all like, oh, it was for benevolent reasons, but you know, you can't just tell a kid to leave and then not be like, but we still love you and this is why and all this. It just seems a little bit like nonsense to me. So uh, it's trending about a 3.5 right now, but I'm only 30% of the way in. We'll just have to see how the rest of it goes. And then I am up to almost 20% of Paladin's Strength by T. King Fisher. This is the second book in the Saint of Steel series. And I already like this a lot more than I liked the first one, Paladin's Grace. In Paladin's Grace, I really did not connect at all with the female main character, especially. And I thought the main male character was just a little bit bland. I'm already liking this one much more because I like the female main character, Clara, a lot more. Her personality just drives with me better. Her kind of motivations, I, I, I am with 100%. And Istvan, the main male character, we got to know a little bit already in the previous book. So I already feel not quite a connection, but I feel like I get him a little bit more. I feel like all of the paladins in this book are probably going to kind of all follow that same keel that Steven did in the first one. So I don't know that I'll ever entirely love any of them. But this one, at least in this one, because we already had a book uh, establishing who this guy was on a surface level, I feel like I already understand him a little bit more than I did Steven. There's not really a whole, much, whole lot to say other than I'm liking it better. And I will always... I always love T. Kingfisher's writing. She writes romances and especially female protagonists that don't quite fit the mold of what you would expect in a romanticy, and I really appreciate that. So I'm enjoying it. I regret that I did not have sufficient time or energy or motivation to get these books read this week. I, like I said, I have been doing a metric shit ton of writing and I'm really excited about that. If you're interested in my writing project I'll let you watch my writing vlogs but suffice it to say I'm in a really exciting part of the project where I'm getting ready to start the draft and so of course I am very eager to put all my energy into that right now. Next week I am going to try and get these two books finished. I don't know that I'll have another random TBR draw in me which is sad because I have been really enjoying it. I'm I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm probably going to carry it over into the next month as well, just because it's worked so well for me. But I do have some library books I really need to get a move on. If I do finish Paladin Strength, I think the next one I'm going to pick up is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. Uh, that is coming up next in my loans and needs to get read pretty quickly. It is another YA, but I have made a concerted effort to limit the amount of YA on my list at a time. So if I have eight or nine holds out, like only two will be YA. Whereas before I was just checking things out like randomly without re any regard of what age category it was. But after spending like the last couple of months dipping in and out of various YAs and not really loving any of them, as much as I want to read and read widely, I, I acknowledge that the YAs aren't doing it for me, especially right now. So I'm only choosing YAs that I have a particular interest in or that I've heard really great things about. I'm, I'm not just, like I said, not randomly just picking them up just because they're available. So that is my plan for reading in this coming week, the new vlog for which will of course start tomorrow. In my next video, I am really excited. I have got a writer workspace redesign that I am working on. I'm going to clean out my writer workspace, kind of shift things around, 
put some new decorations up and, and really get it ready for when I am ready to draft my, my project. So I hope you look forward to it and I will see you then. Bye.